Hey everybody, you should be seeing uh, Gatsby, your community manager, and Ren Farnell. We'll adjust his camera in just a little bit of a minute there, get his whole body on camera. Uh, he's with us today to talk a little bit about what he does on Squad, uh, what he's done to get to Squad, and what else he's doing in the future. He's got some cool things in the pipe that we want to talk about, uh, and we think you'll like it. So, you know, here we are. This is Ren. He is our blueprint designer. Ren, can you tell us a little bit about what a blueprint designer does on Squad? Yeah, sure. Um, hey, I'm Ren. Um... I basically work mostly in Unreal Engine's Blueprint uh, network system. So that's a node-based programming language where you sort of connect together logic, and create gameplay, UI, um, you can do animation with it, materials, all sorts of things. Uh, can you kind of give us uh, an example of what somebody that's playing Squad right now would see uh, of your work, just to kind of give them you know, the context of what, what hits their client? Yeah. So um, the entirety of territory control, other than the original like C++ capture zone system, is all coded in Blueprint. Um, that's made with a custom UI and then custom logic that's, that's written for that uh, graph that creates those hexagons. That's all, uh, that's all done in Blueprint. Uh, and I know we, we partially work in C++ uh, for like the back end of the stuff, and then it often Blueprint is where a lot of things start. Like, how does how do how do you integrate what you do with the rest of the team and, and kind of like uh you know you, you've been integral in kind of creating a, a feel of squad, and and that's kind of an interesting approach. Yeah, um, so I think like one of my oh you cut up. <laughs> um, well, one of my things that I do on a daily basis is sort of work alongside like Tom and and the other designers and alongside the programmers as well, just talking about how we can get um, you know, better optimized features for Blueprint and better uh, sort of like nodes and structures that we can use. And I'm also learning a lot from the C++ uh, play, uh, <laughs> programmers as well, um, just in terms of like, you know, methods I should be using and, and stuff like that. So uh, between Blueprint, programming, design and art, like um, it all sort of comes together in the engine and underneath that Blueprint umbrella and, um, Chuck, Chuck does a lot of that stuff as well, sort of thing, uh, like editing content, basically, in at the the end user level. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's really fat. Like you are a little bit later in the pipeline than some of our artists and stuff, so you actually kind of get uh, a unique perspective where you're combining all sorts of assets, and like that's sort of a unique thing because you really are talking to game design and Chuck, who has been our, our key artist and kind of the the visual mind behind Squad for a really long time. Um. With that in mind, like I've looked in your background, I've seen a little bit of your art station, stuff like that. Can you kind of tell us how you came to this position, especially being kind of a, a unique one within the company? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, so I started 2009 at university. I did um, computer games design degree. I, got, um, I, I worked up to a master's in that back in the UK. And back then I was doing environment art and uh, ZBrush mainly on sort of like cartoony platforming games. Then I moved into an indie studio, made mobile games. Then I moved from that into a company and did programming in C Sharp for mobile games. And I started sort of drifting away from artwork. Um, I ended up really enjoying sort of like the puzzle solving that comes with programming and, and games design in general, like uh, creating systems and stuff. So I ended up fully focusing on just doing that. I taught Unreal for um, less of half of a year. And then uh, after that, I went independent. And then uh, Iron Taxi found me. <laughs> uh, for those of you that don't know, Iron Taxi is kind of one of the uh, the old hands on the the team who's been around for a long time and is uh, just still with us. Is is I believe was uh, the old hand behind Mestia, uh, along with some of the content in uh, Canadian Armed Forces mod. So yeah, uh, you know somebody that's been with Squad a long time and has a great eye for talent. So that's that's how he came to Ren. Uh, how did you uh, and you know to kind of get into that a little bit more, um, shifting from the more artistic side to the technical side. Uh, what kind of tools were you using to transition? Were they like is there like are there recommended tools that like 3ds max is really important for artists the world you know world creation is really important for the mappers what's what's your kind of bread and butter tool set um for what i do nowadays it really is just unreal engine um i use a couple of things online like draw.io to come up with some simple flowcharts and systems while i'm thinking about new features maybe but but generally it's all done inside the engine so once you pick up unreal 4 and then um, and just start opening up those blueprints and, and messing around with the nodes and starting to come up with logic and just hitting play. And then, oh, uh, something didn't work as expected, jump back out, edit those nodes, jump back in. It's super fast and easy to learn. Like, uh, and that's how I started. Like, I just, uh, 
outside of learning Unreal 3 at university, um, where it was like sort of the basics of, of all those, um, what Unreal can do. Um, everything else was, was learned by playing um, and sort of like trying to mimic other games as well. So was there like a gateway drug game that got you into Unreal Engine? I mean, uh, like a, a lot of people coming from the past were kind of divided by Quake or Unreal lines, but was there, uh, what was your entry point? What got you interested in where you're at? Um, I was actually uh, at college and I did a lot of art, art basically. I did, I did art courses and then I did, um, I had like just something different on the side to do while I was doing college, which was business. And I was coming towards the end and had to figure out what I wanted to do next. And I was a massive gamer. So I played Xbox every night, like um, back, back in uh, you know, the 2000s and stuff. So I, I played online games to death. And I sort of decided at that point, you know, maybe there's a way of putting out and business together and that's games, right? So I, uh, that, that, that was my gateway, was, was just the necessity to pick something. And, uh, and I think I picked well. Like, I really enjoy what I do now. So um, that's, that's how that came about. Yeah, I think it's kind of awesome that you, you kind of mentioned it as a social experience, and it, it seems highly appropriate that you've ended up on Squad, which does have a kind of a core of communication. Like, I don't yeah. think anybody on this team has gotten here without being a, kind of a hardcore online gamer that wanted to be in that environment. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's always interesting to hear that this is a common thread between people that really appreciate Squad. Uh, so yeah, that, that's really cool. Uh, Johnny had a, jumping back to Blueprints real quick, Johnny Omaha had a question. Uh, aren't Blueprints specifically for Unreal, or uh, can they be used in other engines? How transferable is that skill set? Um, so I think the blueprints themselves are very much Unreal Engine like specific. Other engines like Unity um, and and probably you know other companies' engines, they probably have visual scripting languages that they've developed that might be in a different format to how blueprints look, but they would generally be the same. And the knowledge that you gain in terms of managing um, code and and optimizing like your use of data and and sort of like creating almost like the most succinct ways to make stuff happen that that logic that um that programmatic sort of like mindset is gonna is gonna stick with you wherever you go so it's kind of you know establishing a good basic and like programming logic is a like you know learning your first language is going to always apply to the next language kind of thing yeah like i guess it's worth saying i never read a book on programming i never read like um you know like a like a systems architecture book or any computer science book. So I just sat down with Unreal Engine. Um, I got taught C Sharp actually at university, but that was just for gameplay. Like I still didn't learn, you know, the deeper sort of parts of it, which is where all the programmers and knowledge and skill sets come in. But yeah, you don't need to, um, hey bugger, <laughs> you don't need to, uh, to read all those books to get into blueprints and start making games. So somebody that is approaching it from almost a very like modding slash layperson approach, uh, what resources do you go to when you're stumped? Like, do you, you know, is there, a, is there a great community out there somewhere? Is there a good, you know, textbook that you reference? Is there something that really helps you get along? Um, when it comes to Squad, I definitely use the Mod Hub. Um, I, I spent a lot of time in there when I was first starting, like asking a lot of people a lot of questions. Um, but in general, just for Unreal Engine, Google is um, obviously the place to go, and then any issues, they're all usually hosted on the Epic Zone forums. So they have um, they have like bug tracking as well as like community highlights for people who've answered the most questions, and it's a really sort of big community there. There's also a Discord for them, but I um, I tend to stick to the to the website, and I type in my search term. I'm like I I need to figure out how to do something with a position of an object of some kind, and someone will probably have come across it. So there's enough people using Unreal that there's just tons of these uh, these sort of questions being asked. Uh, that's actually another thing I'm kind of curious about is like we've been through some major engine overhauls and every time there's something awesome kind of in the next one. Um, you've been working kind of you know hands on very in depth with that directly. Uh, you know how has Unreal changed over the last couple of versions for you? Are you seeing improvements? What are the challenges that you face? Definitely um, usability improvements. So there's been a lot of stuff in the past where between you know version 4.16 and version 4.21, there's just a bunch of stuff missing that I'd be used to in sort of like my hobby time where I'm, I'm working on games at home sort of thing. Um, so there's a lot of features that got added in 4.21 that help us with, with all kinds of things, like just countless, countless little snippets of uh, 
of improvements for, to just like data management and, and options, like so much more stuff got opened up to be used in Blueprint. And that's one of the things about Blueprint and programmers is usually there's some stuff that you can't do because it's not exposed. And that's where the, you know we sort of work together very closely. It's getting those things um, usable as well as um, having more refined architecture coded at the top level. So um, having 421 gives us a lot more options and, and, and sort of like leverage what we can do uh, in Blueprint. Um, and that's uh, something you face on kind of the other side of that is you, you do a lot of active modding. Um, how does what you do on kind of the, the limitations of Blueprints and Squad compared to what you can do with modding? It's actually uh, the opposite way around. I've, I've started to make my own hobby games less because there's so much content in Squad and so much coded and there's all these kinds of things that I would want to play with and especially in terms of dedicated servers. Uh, you know, I like to create multiplayer uh, experiences. So um, using Squad is now my go-to sort of like hobby time thing because that's got a bunch of stuff already sat there waiting to be used and, and really helps me out. So yeah, I, w <laughs> I went recently and started, um, started creating a, a small multiplayer game with some low poly models and stuff and I got about three weeks in and I was like, oh yeah, I'm onto the magazine system now. And I was like, how does Squad do it? Oh, screw this, I'm just going to use Squad. <laughs> that was kind of how, how I've ended up going now. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, that, that's also probably worth name dropping OWI core technology, which is something that like people like Postscriptum have used for like, we do have a framework of technology that is robust and growing more robust and we're going to continue to support. So yeah, like that technology is there. It's only going to get better. There are goodies in the SDK, which is freely available from the Epic Game Store. So if you head over there, you can download that and play with pretty much everything that Ren is talking about here today. Make your own mods, make some really cool stuff. Um, you know, and, and to kind of, there's a question from Burrito Head, which we may have just touched on a little bit, but uh, he's curious, what is your favorite part about Squad as a game? For me? Oh, you broke up there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Burrito Head is curious what your favorite part of Squad is. Yeah. Um, so I think the social aspects for me, like uh, the ability to jump into a server. I was playing with a German squad the other day, and um, I heard them drop my name and said, oh, sorry, guys, I'm English. And then we started having a conversation. I was a marksman, and I was playing as a good marksman. I was with them, listening to what my squad leader said. And, um, and yeah, I was just listening to these guys doing their thing, and, and it was good fun. Like, that, that for me, like, the experience of doing that is the best part for me, not, like, jumping around a corner and shooting a guy and, like, being an absolute hero. Um, but just being part of that, like, larger atmospheric, like, combat and seeing it you know, like a tank drive past and, and like all these, well, the soundscape of it is amazing. For me, it's the experience. Like, it's definitely the uh, the experience. Yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely like the, the it, it's hard to explain sometimes, but yeah, those moments that kind of really emerge and the camaraderie and like, you know, we we see it as a baseline with country roads, but it goes so much far beyond that that it's it's really cool. Uh, there was a question, I, I lost who said it, but they were curious about how, how does Blueprint uh, perform compared to like C++ you know, comparatively? Um, so I've heard it being coined as about 10 times less efficient and you can um, you can sort of boil that down to the idea that um, the blueprint is running some code the code actually needs to be like basically re sort of like configured and changed its language into Unreal's native C++ language or uh, sort of like that end of things so it's doing a second step, and then and then it's being compiled in C++ and read and, and stuff like that. So it's a lot less optimal. Um, I actually learned C++ while I was here, thanks to just being around the guys, um, you know, just popping open um, the code and stuff like that. Um, and it it can be a little bit difficult. I think there's some frustrations for me with C++ when it comes to being just a games developer. It, the compile times and things like that can take some time, at least for me, and maybe that's a better way of doing things. But for Blueprint, I, I really appreciate its speed and like for prototyping and creating new features and just like, hey, guys, look at this. Like that, that's, um, that's sort of like where my angle comes from. And then, you know, pass that up the chain and someone coded properly sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, no, that is actually one thing that I have been really impressed about, especially since the last engine update, is uh, how many people on the team have been able to kind of come up with concepts and neat things that they're trying out in the engine just kind of rapidly in their free time. So, like, there is a huge core of the team that just likes to play with the engine and modify and see what's possible, and that's kind of where we get some really cool features out of what we, you know, don't necessarily plan on, but 
Yeah, like uh, I, I think Axton is a really good example of that too, where he's you know always playing grass or textures or something, and we ended up getting a cool performance grade. And like so, yeah, like it's it's really fascinating to hear that that is made possible by like Unreal's technology. Yeah. Um, speaking of, uh, Musket Ball is curious. Do you prefer Kismet UE3 or Blueprint Blueprint UE4 for design? Definitely um, Blueprint. You, you can basically imagine Kismet as um, an, a very sort of like grandfather version of Blueprint, and then no, that's the way I like to imagine it. It had all the same sort of functionality, but it was just you were un unable to really organize things. You couldn't, you know, you couldn't do typical programming things like have a function or an interface or a class structure. It was all just one graph that kind of was more about managing events within your level. At least that's what I experienced. Um, I'm not sure if that's like 100% fact, but um, it felt like it was one graph to rule sort of like the world and the events that you want to do. It's great for level design, creating cinematics and, and doors and events and, and silly little things like that. But Blueprint is like, it is an entire programming language. It's just visual. Right on. I mean, like, that's, yeah, it's, it's all fascinating to me. Like, the, what you do is essentially black magic, so it's, it's really great to kind of hear that explanation. Um, uh, Elkuz is curious, uh, can you with enough time in BP Editor change any aspect of the game, or is it more limited? Um, I guess it depends. You might need to expand on that. Like, change any aspect of squad. Um, certainly, most things, yeah, from, from inventory to game modes to um, how guns behave and uh, how vehicles behave, stuff like that. Like every sort of piece of content you can imagine that is in squad, um, you know, including the UI and how squads are formed and um, you know stuff like that. You can you can really totally change how those things work. Um. So yeah. So that's like a big part of modding, and and I do kind of want to get into uh, how you approach modding before we talk about your actual mods. Um, is it just kind of uh, just that in continued interest in tweaking squad? How did you first kind of get into the modding community? Um, so I guess the first time I got into the sort of like modding scene, if you like, like coming, coming and seeing those guys on, on the Discord was when I started work on, um, on Squadron, which is one of Iron Taxi's sort of like projects that he was, he was working with. And I had to go to the mod hub to talk to the guys. So um, I needed to know more about how things worked. Um, I wasn't modding at that point. Um, it was only sort of like six months later when I got a job offer and I, I came to work here. And then probably another six to eight months after that, I ended up being like, okay, I know enough about squad and I've done my, you know, I've done my job now. I've, I've re like skinned the UI and stuff like that. Like what, what else can I learn? And, um, and that's when I started Troopers. And that's how I got really into into the modding. They're they're curious how much we need to pay you to leak something, and I'm guessing they probably don't have enough to risk that for you. But uh, nice try. We we appreciate the leak begging, but uh, we are, we have uh, our developers well trained these days. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, like uh, you you have been an active participant in the modding community, and uh, I you know I think it's probably pertinent to recommend that. Like, why don't you tell us about your uh, your your most famous mod? <laughs> Yes. Uh, so, um, like I just mentioned, I started Troopers um, about about a year into being at OWI. This is like last, uh, sort of sometime last year. Um, and the idea started as basically, I love squad. Um, I love playing it with the people. I love the experience, but I don't necessarily like the competitive stuff. That's not me. Uh, I'm not super good at uh, you know ju jumping around anymore. Uh, back in the day of Halo, sure, but. Um, but now that I've played squad, I see this whole other side of gaming. So I was like, what could I make with that? And what am I interested in? And I love uh, Borderlands and stuff like that as well. So the what came to mind was just put AI in the game. And I'm not going to make soldier AI because that, that's going to be a, a massive uh, challenge. But I'll do bugs. And so I threw a bunch of models from the marketplace together, threw that into the SDK, gave them like a very simple YouTube 10-minute tutorial level of AI. And started shooting them, and it was great fun. Um, and then so I moved forward from there, and what Troopers became is this game about dropping in with 40 guys, fighting against up to 200 bugs on this landscape, um, different planets and stuff, um, doing logistics runs. You know, you're uh, you're doing you're doing the logistics runs, you're killing the bugs, you're building bases, um, and sort of like having a good time with your mates. Um, it's it's a good laugh. 
Uh, it's obviously it has some really cool inspiration, um, but to make that come to life, you did have to basically develop some new technologies like AI, and I think Squad Z was kind of the other group in that time. Um, you know, we've since seen a little bit of the AI coming in in uh, Squad with the tutorials, but uh, how did you first approach, you know, getting AI into Squad? I mean, that's kind of a unique feature. Yeah, um, so I kind of guess it boils back down to a couple of years ago um, before I was... Um, back in that moment where I said I was sort of indie between being a teacher and working with OWI, there was a little section in there where I was indie, I was making a VR, uh, RTS, top-down, medieval, sort of like tower defense game, and that was my first touch on AI. And really to learn that and put that into squad again, because it had been like two years since, I had a general idea, but I just looked at YouTube and went, hey, uh, Unreal Engine 4, AI, basic, like, just follow me. That's That's all I want, I want you to follow me. And then, so... You know, ten minutes later, and you've 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 got something, even if it's invisible, just moving it. You can see a little marker, and um, that's kind of where it, that's that's how those things start. And then from there, it's you know, with the squad stuff was you know various weeks of iteration between like core features that we want in the in the main game, and um, just saying like, hey, I have AI and troopers now. Could we have it in the tutorial? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I'll spend some actual like man hours on doing that. Um, and just sort of like bug testing and fixing. And we did try and put those into the mod SDK, but something broke along the way. So um, hopefully in the future, we'll have some some better AI solutions in the mod SDK for people to use as well. Awesome. I mean, uh, so like, it's not just you on the, on the Troopers team, obviously. You've been fairly open with polling and, and, can, and you know, working with the rest of the community. Uh, is that something that you feel is kind of innate to your style? Or like, how do you envision a team when you start that way? I um I'm definitely a solo player. Um so <laughs> I I spend a lot of my time at work being massively like team oriented and um and, and working with a lot of people and a lot of minds and there's a lot of creativity going around and that's um and that's what I love at work. But when I'm at home I sort of do go very solo. With troopers, um I try to open that gate a bit and be a bit more um more sort of like team oriented outside of work. And that sort of led to having this team of people who made maps, who made bugs, who made like sounds and all sorts of things, um, like entire maps even. Um, so that kind of like where Troopers sort of ended up as a team project. And, um, but yeah, I'm, gen I'm generally, <laughs> I like to uh, experiment with stuff on my own because there's no guarantee that things are gonna work. And if people are relying on me for just something I'm doing for a hobby, uh, just for fun at, at, after, you know, after getting home or whatever, then uh, it's a little bit less stressful. Yeah, for sure. Um, like, there is a kind of a bit of an element of horror, you know, the bugs are just, like, horrific creatures. Uh, is that something that you aspire to? Is it something just kind of a, a tone that developed naturally? Is it something that you still would like to see more of in games? So, yeah, um, the sort of horrific element of those bugs, I guess, was uh, something that came around naturally. Like, I threw the bugs in and squad's a realistic game and so I shoot them and I'm like, oh that's cool. And the lighting's all realistic and it's a stark difference from, you know, things like Helldivers or or Borderlands, so which are a lot more like fun and bubblegummy, right? So already just innately it's a bit more hor like horrifying, scary, dramatic. Um and so I guess I just lent into that, or you know, we as the mod team lent into that, especially um Bruno made like this really dark, really like atmospheric level. Um, and that really just set the tone, right? It's like, oh, it's it's a it's sort of a grim, like alien esque, um, you know, Starship Troopers esque universe that we want to build this mod within. Um, I think it kind of evolved from there into like, yeah, let's let's lean into that. <laughs> um, would you say any of that kind of comes from Squad? Like, we we do set out to be kind of a realistic experience. Is there like a three D? Like, it's obviously you're looking at alien worlds, so it's a little bit different. You know, you're not coming from Afghanistan, you're not coming from Iraq. Yeah, um, no, it's definitely squad. So you you pick up this realistic M4 rifle, um, back in the beginning, right? This is this is back when we didn't have custom weapons. But you, you you have this real rifle and you're reloading it. It sounds all real, and you shoot a cartoony, bouncy bug. It just doesn't feel right. So it's not just about feeling, but also like as I said earlier, my favorite thing about squad is the atmosphere, the the experience of being in this immersed in this new world and this new place that I would never get to be anywhere else so when i was creating those alien worlds and sort of like coming up with uh, you know these concepts with with the team 
uh, who worked on it, the mod team. So yeah, it kind of was like, yeah, let's make it, um, let's obviously make it fit squad. It has to fit squad. Like everything in there, the soundscape and everything sort of fits this idea of it being more realistic and more sort of like um, sort of scary and stuff, yeah. I think it might be an interesting side effect of kind of your art background mixed with your game design background coming into just making uh, that holistic experience where like, yes, you're, you're staying true to this kind of squad thing, but there's obviously a very strong guiding hand in the tone of the game. And it's it's been really cool to see that develop. And you know, obviously, like having other people come on board and help develop that has been really cool. We got to feature that during the modding uh, event uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, I, you know, have seen your experience in the past with some game jams, and I kind of wanted to touch on that. It seems very much like you are uh, kind of incorporating some of those lessons into the modding world, and I'm curious, how did you first get interested in game jams, and what do you take out of them? That kind of thing. Yeah, totally. Um, so back at um, UK University, um, back in staffs, I, uh, I did games jams there. So they would host, like, within the university, they would host, um, like, you know, 40 to 80 people, all games jamming, doing like the global, the global games jam. And that was sort of like the first um, sort of like touching upon like what games jams were for me and, you know, failed miserably. That for me then became an objective. It was like, right, I need to be, I need to get good at uh, doing something in two days or something like that. Um, so games jams really started there back in like 2010. Um, and then so from there it was like a lot of uh there's lots of games jams there's there's tons of them there's you know there's the global games jam there's there's um there's a bunch online like on itch.io you can just find tons of games jams if you're ever feeling like the itch to like say i want a mod squad but i want to do it with a theme in mind and i can't think of anything just find a games jam and like there'll be a theme um, and you can you can get some inspiration from those and that's that kind of helped me because um, I went from art to programming and lost a lot of that creativity and sort of like ability to just like ideate stuff. Um, became a lot more, um, I guess, jaded in like how I think things should be made and uh, less less uh, open to ideas. So games jams for me are a way to just like have something tell me like what what uh, sort of direction I should go. Oh, I do want to take just a quick step back and actually, uh, can you kind of explain what a game jam is for people that might not be in the development world? Oh, yeah, sure. yeah um, a games jam is basically a short space of time with usually a theme, um, sometimes prizes as well at the end for the people who have actually developed something in that time. And the reason for that is so that you can um, have this little bit of motivation to not really necessarily, uh, you know, create something amazing, insanely crazy, is to really about making a game, like a small game, doesn't matter uh like how how polished or whatever it is it just has to achieve the theme and some games jams say like oh you know how good is your graphics and how smooth is your gameplay and did you manage to put it in a certain size uh like 100 megabytes for this game so they're like little challenges and stuff and that's that's the unreal engine games jams that happen like four times a year but um but yeah games jams short space of time usually two days to a week um create a video game Sometimes I've used them as an as a reason to try something crazy, and I've always regretted it at the end. And then, um, you know, the more the more blueprinting I did over the years, the more I could approach a games jam and say like, I know how to do something, right? I know how to do VR. Let's just do something simple in VR. And that and really, it's also um, just a little bit of fun. Like it's a good little bit of fun. <laughs> There's lots of people making lots of games. Uh, you get to play a lot of cool new ideas and lots of cool video games come out of that like steam games and stuff so there's another reason i do games jams is that i would love to put you know stuff on steam um so yeah that helps as well doing games jams sometimes you might come up with something great i don't um, i can't let you get away without asking one of your regrets there you uh you talked about uh, maybe going too big or making something silly uh, i would love to hear a little bit more about that yeah sure um so one games jam um out of Nick Seek can probably remind me uh, what it was called because we worked on it together. It was like a snow, snow. It was called Snowkin. It was a snowman pumpkin who could who could change. And I'll get into the details now, which you can start seeing the scope. You can change between this pumpkin sort of like Halloween guy and a snowman. And the way that you do this is by um, sort of like killing choir singers. And <laughs> it's a top down game, and it's all snowballs. It's actually it was not really killing them. There's snowballs and stuff. And the more you do this, the more demonic you become from a snowman to a pumpkin. And the whole uh, like premise behind it is that Snowkin used to just be, you know, it's Halloween. It's literally like, you know, 31st October. Next day, Christmas is on the, it's like, 
come on, it's literally just been Halloween. So that's his reason for being annoyed. And he goes and goes on a rampage. And yeah, you slowly become more demonic and it's got like AI characters and uh, like Dota 2 inspired ability systems that you can like have timed you know, AOEs and all. it was just crazy. And so, yeah, we had fun and we made something interesting, but like at the end of the day, uh, it was just way too big. And Nick, uh, Nick or out of Nixie did all the uh, sound effects for it, and we did like voiceovers and cinematics and all sorts of silly stuff in like a five day period um, back in the UK. It was it was really fun and really silly idea, but um, but yeah, I guess I regret. I don't I don't regret like making it, but I do regret like you know not trying. I guess like trying to keep the scope small and try and maybe win something because that's something we always like to try and do from <laughs> previous. In, in the previous games, Jams for Unreal, we actually got honorable mentions. So that was pretty cool. And we were like, we were adamant to get another honorable uh, honorable mention. And yeah, we didn't get it because we went too big. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like you might have learned just as much from an honorable mention as you did from, uh, you know, going yeah. too big in scope. Like that is almost always a a creep on projects. Uh, you know, we even have emojis for it in Slack where, you know, if you, if you don't watch your scope creep, it, it always gets huge. Yeah. Um, yeah. Speaking of Nixel, he was curious, uh, as a designer, do you find yourself influenced heavily by the games you've been playing recently? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, 100%. So, was a good example. Um, I, was play, I was playing Dying Light recently, and so whilst playing that, I got in touch with Smed, and was, uh, he, he was looking for some animations or some rigging for one of his models. I was like, yeah, I'll totally do that right now. I really want to, I'm really into that sort of like area of games right now so um I'll, I'll i'll help you out with that and then so i think um games in in general like if i'm if i'm sitting around i've played let's say i've played a lot of squad um this idea that i came up with this one time was like i'd love to try and create my own like much smaller sort of rpg version of squad and that was because i was obviously working on squad a lot and at home i would be playing things like the witcher and i'm just like I'd like to make a smaller scope version of, of The Witcher where there is the RPG elements, where there is like characters you can talk to and stuff, but it's not this enormous world. Um, and so, yeah, definitely get inspired by the games I play. And the games I play are generally explorey, sort of like large open worlds with um, the option to sandbox, sort of like explore and, and stuff like that. Things like The Journey were a linear version of that for me. Um, I think yeah, Journey, The Witness, um, a couple of these games that are a bit more like freeform and um, and give you an opportunity to sort of go at your own pace. Those are kind of my my style of games. So um, I guess that's what I bought to Troopers was like, hey, how about you're not having to shoot another player um, on on the you know sort of like a twitch reaction stuff. It's more like you know it's a little bit slower pace, it's a little bit more uh, more easy going, I guess. Yeah, no, and it's it's kind of interesting because like that is a twist from Squad, but still maintaining a lot of Squad, and like it it is a thing that does go through with Smed too, where you mentioned you can kind of work with Smed from Squad Z. Um, yeah. Have you in that situation you're kind of doing a little bit of parallel development? Have you been surprised by kind of how divergent they are? Do you guys have very similar experiences when you're developing? I don't know how much you've kind of collaborated. Oh, um, just just models in general. Like I'll, I'll, I can speak on that. Like. Um, it's amazing to see some of the some of the guys just like come up from you know not knowing anything one week and the next week suddenly they're like talking your language. That is super inspiring to see. Um, and and like uh, Egmo and Smed and and a couple of the other guys are, are examples of that. Um, I, I really enjoy seeing that from from Squad's community. So um, from from how we develop, I guess um, I'm very much more. Um, I guess I mean I can't I can't really say for them, but for me at least I'm very uh, too focused on it. Like it's my hobby, it's my job um, as well. So I spend a lot of time playing around and, and, and experimenting and stuff. Um, and I can imagine like um, from a modest perspective, you know, you have other things that you enjoy. Probably playing squad is one of them. Um, <laughs> like so, hopefully, you hopefully you enjoy playing squad. Yeah. Exactly. So what I mean is, like, you're probably spending, you know, a couple of hours in your evening playing that game, right? So, uh, you know, playing squad or playing something else. So recently, I've started trying to play a little bit more video games. So, yeah, Dying Light is back on my table right now. 
trying to finish that with with that and Nixie. Right on. Um, so we, we, you know, we touched on modded, we touched on game jams. It would be irresponsible of me not to ask you about uh, Squad Jam. I mean, you want to tell us about what Squad Jam is and kind of how it came about? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I say I want to talk to you about Squad Jam. Um, <laughs> so Squad Jam started as just like um, just after the modding weekend and the and the and the whitelisting happened, and it was really cool to see troopers and space crew and all of these new maps that I hadn't seen before get played. And I was like, this is brilliant. What's and straight away, I was thinking, you know, what's the next time this happens going to look like? Is it just going to be troopers and space crew, and, you know, squads and these guys again? I was like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll set out on this little uh, crusade to make a new mod. Um, and at the same time, to start helping um, a lot more with, with the other mods. So helping out Squad Z, helping out like new modders, um, trying, to, trying to get the uh, sort of like ball rolling on their projects and stuff. Um, so really what Squad Jam was, was a two-day thing. It was the idea that um, instead of you know uh, two teams of large large size, it's uh, one team of many small squads, and you can be one player or you can be six players. And the idea is that um, you all jump in, and it's kind of this royale esque mode, but without the shrinking ring and without the random drops. That uh, weapon infantry system is more like Counter Strike's start of round buy your kit sort of gameplay, and um, so I'm together with my squad and you're together with your squad and maybe there's three other squads and a solo guy. We've all got different weapons and we're able to talk on squad chat and the squad leaders are also able to heckle each other on team chat because they are on the same team. And you can also communicate in local with people around you. So you can form squads in the middle of combat and you can backstab each other and different weird things can happen to try and become the victor of the squad jam. And the person who wins gets to keep their equipment, the, the rich get richer. But um, the plan is that they would have a bounty on their head in the next round. The cool thing that I really went with Squad Jam as well um, that I really want to mention is uh, you don't just die and that's it and you leave, right? That would kill a server. So what we do is when you die, you become this cool drone and you fly around in the skies. Um, someone, I think Zeno sent me a video of Oblivion. And it's like a drone, like a metallic drone. It's huge. Flies around, makes like a whomping noise and it can shoot at players and it can suppress them, but it can't kill them. And what it can also do is mark targets for you. So you're flying around, you're dead, but you're flying around, you're helping a squad, your squad, or you might have joined one after you died. And whilst doing that, you can gain credits and points to use on your kit next time. So rather than just dying at the start of a round and being like, oh man, it's over, this sucks, leave. You're like, oh yeah, I can fly around as a drone. It kind of feels cool. It's like kind of like a quadcopter flight model. Um, you can shoot other drones and stuff. You have these like sky battles. It's like watching Star Wars over your head. Um, meanwhile, the guys are on the ground doing their tactics, doing their squad play. Um, it's really cool. I really like it. I, you can probably tell I'm really, um, I'm really excited <laughs> about uh, Squad Jam. Yeah, I mean, uh, so how can people get involved? Is it something that you're welcoming all comers? Do you, do you just want playtesters? Is there what's uh, what's the best way to find it? Yeah. Um, so a little bit like I said earlier, um, I am I am sort of like a a solo a solo player sometimes when it comes to these things and, and one way i've tried to like combat that is i do want to work with a lot of people a lot, a lot of cool content comes out of the mod community and one of the things that i really loved about the whitelisting event was that all these things got sourced so or got seen um so what i'm doing in squad jam is i'm featuring mods um so i've worked with the calf guys and got some of the you know the timberwolf and like the gustav in um and i'm working with bruno and space crew at the moment and talking to him about what we could do um introducing some cool stuff to squad jam and you know other modders and mappers out there as well and um, like uh, i've got haju from uh, wonder coming and there's a famas from from the fdf and stuff like that is all super cool working with those guys but otherwise i'm working on it and sort of like independently like creating that stuff and then passing it by them yeah this is an example of that screen um so this is like the entry screen when you this is like a work in progress from last night but yeah um so I'm a, I'm working at the moment with a lot of sort of like people who found the mod on Steam. They've come over to the Discord and we're just playing it and they're telling me, you know, this feature sucks, get rid of it. Like, um, you know, the, oh, these guns are great, but they're too expensive or uh, things like that. So I'm kind of working a lot with the players to try and make something that really fits the sort of like the squiddies or whatever you <laughs> sort of like refer to the squad players. Uh, trying to make something that fits fits that market of people and they can play and enjoy and just engage with weapons that they would never otherwise been able to engage with or select an avatar from a 
from the list of cool models that squad has and you can like you know rotate them and zoom in on them and like check out cool artwork and um, i'm just given those hopefully given this those players those squad players something to really geek out over and and play um as well as like um the, the flip side which is like put all the mod content together and 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 sort of like have people really play lots of content and and see what's out there Oh yeah, how are you making sure that kind of everything stays in balance and that like it's not just a, a fire hose coming at you? How are you making those decisions to where the where do you where do you want Squad Jam to go? I mean, what's your what's your guiding light? Um, so some of the community guys have a really good idea on how to do this, which is um, and I've got a technical solution for it, which is basically I sift through the entire asset registry of Squad's blueprint code um, of, of all the blueprints for every weapon. And I read all of the magazines and the bullets and the damage that those bullets do, and maybe like um, the, yeah, the, the caliber of those bullets and stuff. Um, the recoil even could come into a, as a factor and export that into an Excel sheet and then come up with a formula. I haven't done that bit yet, but uh, <laughs> but that's the idea of how we're going to balance it. And right now, the way it's sort of like just chatting with random people like Zeno and and the guys on the Discord is like it, it's probably going to be mostly based on. Um, Guns cost money based on how much effective, how effective they are, how much ammo they have, how much damage they do, how fast they fire and stuff. But there, uh, there's a thing in the game that's like your um, your experience level, which is how much money have you earned over time equal to like an exponential level, and that level locks out guns. And so just cooler guns come later. So things with optics and things with like uh, you know big rocket launchers and stuff, sniper rifles, those are all like slightly later in the it's like sort of like progression arc that you have in squad jump but yeah cheap guns less effective expensive guns way more effective um you have like a customizable inventory and you can sort of set your main weapon and your sidearm and your special and your three throwable weapons you've got like a backpack which can have med kits or you can put down like barbed wire and dig that up and stuff so but in the future uh, there is a roadmap on the discord that um I welcome you guys to go check out. It's like the idea of having you know proper deployable bases that we can make um, different game modes where it's like four squads of twenty players and they have like you know the whole you know get your weapons, build your bases, like head out into the world. Maybe there's a, like a ticket amount that you have to reach. Like you have to reach fifty tickets, like uh, fifty uh, kills on the enemy to uh, to win the round, and it's more like constant respawning. Whereas in Squad Jam right now. In the arena sort of mode it's like once you die you're dead so there's a lot of other modes that i want to do as well um i've got a bunch of custom weapons that i've made already i made a p90 i've got a socom i didn't model these by the way i've got a socom a p90 and like um i've got a barrette um they're all like rigged up to squad weapons and stuff um yeah it's uh it's getting it's getting there it's really cool <laughs> Uh, so with the experience system, is it possible to like fall back down a level, or are you always, you know, you're always forward? Yeah, that's a good question because uh, it really links into my mindset when I'm working on Squad Jam, which is positive only. Like there is not um, the battle royale style negative like feedback at all. It's not like I go into a round, there's random guns, and I just happen to not get them, or some guy gets the drop on me because he randomly spawned behind me and you know I'm not aware of that stuff like that that sort of thing does still happen in squad jam but the main thing is that you go in like with all your gear and it's all positive so like except for dying and losing and being like oh me um that bit is like kind of the only negative bit the rest of it is always earning money always going up levels always unlocking new gear um there's always ways to earn money no matter if you're dead or alive um if you actually kill that guy this is a cool thing as well. If you actually, you know, get that guy who's got better equipment than you, walk up to his body, you can loot his backpack and take all his guns. So um, if you win the round, then you get to keep all the guns as well. Uh, so there's a couple of cool cool things around that. And there's points for doing that stuff. Like every time you take down a person, every time you like take their backpack, you'll get like points for you and your team like and your squad, right? So there's this cool thing about like the more people in your squad, the more uh, exponential money becomes. Because if I earn 500 salvaging this drone on the floor that's randomly crashed and i pick that drone up and i get 500 points if i'm on my own that's just 500 but if i have three friends with me we all got 500 and we're all going to get better in the next round so there's a lot of incentive 
and positive sort of like positive feedback there to try and keep things like fun and and just enjoyable and not like rage quitty because I really hate that about Battle Royale. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It, it can be a, a detriment, especially if you get a couple rounds in a row where you just get beat up because all you got was a pistol. It's like, why am I even waiting in line? Um, so yeah, it yeah. sounds like you're you're really considering kind of like snowballing mechanics and ways to kind of keep people engaged throughout the game rather than just watching the game after they, you know, like a, that is a major problem. That's really cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, no, it, it, it is a really kind of a positive and interesting experience where like, yeah, like it is something that, you know, somebody has ta asked about dragging in chat. We're like, yeah, it, it is a unique approach to making the the incapacitated state a lot more engaging where like that is something that we want to look at at squad and you can kind of see how like some of these experiments kind of bleed back and forth. Yeah, no, they do because like the weapon rotation system like um, that I've got in the game I'm really considering, uh, you know, I've asked already a few times around the office, uh, you know, to, to like, to my, uh, to my boss, uh, Chuck and, and Buzz as well, is like, can we put that in the wiki, like, in a, in a, in a main menu? Can we have the weapons? Like, can we just zoom in on them? Because it's really fun. Like, it's really cool to see the amount of effort and, and, um, and stuff that people have gone into. Uh, it's really cool. Like, so I want to get that into Squadro. Um, and there's a couple of other things, like game mode ideas have come out that we could implement in squad and i don't think squad jam itself would be would be that it obviously squad will always be based on roles and and stuff like that but definitely there could be some new uh some new uh future game modes in the future maybe it'd be interesting to to see how how that might work um one thing that really strikes me about squad jam is it is sort of a way to really upgrade the customization of squad within squad uh, without going like cosmetics, or do you have any plans for cosmetics? Is it something that you want to change the look and feel of, or are you always going to try to keep it kind of core squad? There is um, some gimmicks in Squad Jam. So there are guns that are bright pink, and you know they're at the highest level, and they're like targets for people who are into cosmetics or customization. There's also like an avatar selection screen where you can be like, oh, I'm going to be a calf soldier, or I'm going to be like, um, you know. Maybe other mods in the future will um, be interested in partnering up and, and doing some stuff, but you could definitely start cosplaying, you know, like uh, I might introduce, I have bought some models that are like suited, sort of like very civilian um, characters. And then there's obviously the PPS HK, which is kind of like a Tommy gun, um, or however that gun is called, sorry. Um, but yeah, so you could cosplay as a Mafia guy and stuff like that maybe in the future. Um, I really like that idea that you can be you can look at someone and be like he has played this quite a bit he is cosplaying like and just having fun he's you know and then there's other squad i have a i have a faction that i want to develop within that game that is literally just like the tactical like your pistol has an extended mag and a stock and a and a, and a suppressor and a scope and all these stupid things you may only yeah. tactical reload yeah exactly this silly sort of faction that i want to make for squad jam where you can cosplay as basically, you know, Solid Snake or or uh, Sam Fisher, and really get that experience from from that faction. Like <laughs> that's what I want to do with it. Is just like have a bit of fun. Uh, but yeah, cosplaying and and avatars and sort of like customizing your outfit is a little bit already in there. And I think it's at the level it's going to be forever now. It's never going to be like change your face, change your colors of your uniform. It's always going to be like pick pick a uniform. Like which who do I want to be? Oh, I'm going to be the marksman. Uh, he's got some cool ghillie netting and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, what immediately jumps to mind is to build on that to make something like a, a mission generator or something that everybody can get into. So I think there's a really a lot of cool potential for people to get involved in a mod like that. And uh, as you said, like you play a lot of the games, you get a lot of inspiration from those games. So like you know, that's that's a good way to look at the next mod and and get the next yeah. idea and the inspiration. So like, uh, be sure to check out Squad Jam. We want to see more people do that stuff. I don't know if you. I've played a lot of Destiny. <laughs> I've done a fair bit of Destiny, yeah. Or Destiny <laughs> 2, at least. I didn't do the first one, but yeah. So that's definitely bled into this one. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I also noticed there's a little bit of like GTA in there, too. The idea of taking on a role and kind of being, you know, the knowledgeable, yeah. outstanding target, which is, yeah, like that's... Uh, that sort of emergent gameplay is really what kind of drives that experience, especially if you control from the sky with a drone afterward, you know? <laughs> yeah, this is a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to try and play around with that second sort of layer to the game and try and make it really feel like a dogfight, but yeah, GTA definitely. <laughs> Ooh, I've lost the nickname, but uh, we have one person that's curious. Uh, what is the hardest thing you've tried to code in Blueprint? 
Um, I had this thing I tried to code in Bitcoin. Um, most things um, tend, tend to come around fairly quick. Oh, um, a, a good one was uh, the map. So we had to recreate the map. I ended up enlisting like help from the programmers fairly quickly because it's very obvious um, to see when things are above the blueprint bar. Um, or at least in, in that scenario, it was to do more with time and, 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 and like a, it's essential for the next release that this is done. And I couldn't have done it in Blueprint, not on my own and not in that amount of time. So yeah, we had the we had a bunch of programmers like um like Jester and stuff come and come and come in there, help us out on that. Um that was the biggest challenge, I think, was that new map system with the new grid, like um the way it like is managed in the back end is a lot more uh, clever now. Um yeah, that, that was one of the hardest ones. I met, was that tied in all with uh, like the birth of territory control? Because that was a lot of uh a new interface and a whole kind of a new system. Yeah. What about it? Sorry. Oh, I, I just wondered, was that, that was tied in with territory control and some of the, like, the, the kind of uniquely developed, I mean, we, you basically had to create a whole new mode interface, too. That, that territory control was super not hard. <laughs> really? That's <laughs> amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was super easy. It was just finding the time. So it was easy because I had a hex generating tool made myself for another game years ago. So I already had this like spline based thing uh, where you like drag out a spline, you create hexes and stuff. And then it was just about taking that and figuring out what we want to do with it in squad and like how people like first want to interact with, with that tool. And it's, it's evolving over time a lot now. Like the more it gets used, the more it evolves and becomes more user friendly and more designer friendly. But uh, yeah, no, territory control was super easy. It was literally make a grid of hexagons when they get captured, do some rules. Like it was really, really simple. Like if you think about the essence of it, it's just a capture zone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's worked out really well because, like, it, it it is one of my favorite modes, and uh, you know, coming kind of from Planet Side and knowing that Ross had a lot of roots uh, with that too, and he was designing it, it uh, it made it really kind of come to life in a way that is much easier to track. Like, you know, I remember trying some of the early betas, and it was uh, it was hard to have, tell what the hell was going on. Um, and so the interface was a huge boon to that, and that's something that certainly made it a lot easier to play. Yeah, no, it's definitely worth a shout out to, to to Ross and Dave as well because like they, you know, they birthed the idea themselves. Like they came to, they came and said, "Hey, Ren, would you be able to do this?" And this was God knows how long ago. And I was like, "Yeah, sure." Started, got overwhelmed with so much other content like um, like the new map system and and things like that, and the new like front end UI stuff that I never got around to territory control. But eventually, I did, and I hope I made those guys proud as well. I, I, th I would say so. Um, there is a question from El Coos. Uh, they want to know, could variables be extended past a single round for something like stat tracking with blueprints? Yeah, it's something I'm playing around with in Squad Jam. Um, so <laughs> again, like uh, Gatsby keeps saying, these things will bleed back into the community when I figure them out. Um, so uh, I'm trying to get um, persistent bounties. So when a squad wins in the next round, you know who it is and you can go after those players. Um, there is um, some accidents I've come across making Squad Jam where, um, let me think, if you reload the same level, your player control, and in fact, I think this is always the case, your player controller is seamlessly traveling, so everything on the player controller is, is kind of persistent in a way, I believe. So if you add new variables to your custom player controller in a mod, and you tick a box on it, and it's replicated in one level, and you go to the next one, it should it should still be there, and that's something I want to double check on. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's that's what was happening for me. I had a bunch of problems where, uh, yeah, stuff like the winner was persisting in the next round of Squad Jam, and um, the game would instantly end because there's a winner. <laughs> so I so, was like, oh, no. So a happy accident came across that. It is possible. That's cool. I, I really appreciate that you never know kind of what you're going to discover when you like, you know, it, there's there's always interesting successes, even when the results are unexpected is kind of the. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, I, you know, in my experiences with computers and programming, it's pretty much always an unexpected result. And you, you always learn something. So. Yeah, you always learn something. Oh, so we're coming up to on the end of the hour. Um, and I did want to at least uh, give you a chance to kind of pitch anything else you wanted to talk about. Um, and then uh, oh, I had one more thing I was going to say. But I'll let you, is there anything that you kind of want to talk about? Is there anything that you want to pitch to people as part of the modding community, as a squad developer, anything that you just uh, want to kind of broadcast out there? Um, 
yeah, I definitely encourage people to to get into modding and join up on the Mod Hub and think about the future of the next whitelisting event and know that your stuff will get played if it gets whitelisted, if it's maybe um, maybe a faction that fits within squad and or a game mode that is really fun. Um, and if you ever have uh, any questions about that, don't hesitate to ask because I would love to help you guys achieve those those ideas. Um, that's that's really like what's on my mind at the moment in terms of um, what I do within um, OWI is a lot of gameplay coding, a lot of um, experimentation, and um, more recently a lot of a lot of modding. So if you're uh, if you're looking for for any assistance, let me know. Yeah, and you know we have the modding Discord available. We also have our community Discord, which you should be able to see on screen, uh, which is discordgg squad. Uh, another thing we have recently relaunched is the Offworld Store, where you can kind of snag some squad merchandise. It is a new, improved vendor with uh, better shipping, better quality. We've got magic mugs with spear on them. There's a dancing insurgent shirt that's pretty amazing. Uh, that is at owi.gg/store. Um, that's worth checking out. It, you know, you, you, I don't, I'm not sure if we have this hat, but there is a very similar camo hat that is uh, one that I have my eye on. There's also some polices. That's cool stuff. Uh, you know, thank you for coming today. Thank you for coming, Ren. It's been really fascinating to kind of hear about what you do in Bull Squad and kind of how you're powering Squad's future. Uh, you know, we're, we're really excited to see where the mods go, and thank you so much for the fun we've had so far. Um, thank yeah. you to everybody for coming today. We really appreciate you being here. Uh, we'll have this archived on YouTube before too long, so you know, come back, watch again, and then be sure to join us the next time. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Thanks. Thanks, Leslie. Thanks, everyone.